Hello. Hello. Hi there. Can you hear us okay? Yep. Cool. Yeah. Uh, thanks a lot for hopping on. You you have the floor of the traffic commission. Hi, it's Justin Gonlag from 412 North Barry requesting the uh, the mirror. Oh, I got you. Um, we're going to cover this with the old business. Um, if you don't mind hanging on the line, is that okay? Yeah, sure, no problem. Okay, thank you. No, that was that was that was nine one seven. Mister uh, Gonlag is on there twice, actually. So, uh, Ms. Malkish, let me uh, ask for two of you. Um, Ms. Mal, okay, there she was. That's the next one. Yeah, I think uh, Ms. Malkish. Okay, Ms. Malkish. Yep, Makish. Book ahead. Makish. Sorry about that. Oh. Uh, yeah, the floor is yours. I, I'm just here to represent um, the voice uh, of the requested crosswalks in Orienta. Um, specifically, I think um, we're asking for a lighted crosswalk at the Orienta Rushmore Gillies Park intersection. Um, it's a very tricky intersection for an adult. Um, and so with kids walking and that intersection in terms of the kids is pretty much where any kid who lives in Orienta and walks to Central will cross because they either come down Rushmore or down Orienta. Um, and I'm not sure if you're aware, but someone actually got hit there last Friday, um, a mom with her toddler, um, and it is certainly not the first time. So I'm hoping you guys can give that intersection some attention. And then secondly, um, also slightly lesser priority, but also important is the end of Old Post Road, where it meets Boston Post Road. The kids have to cross back over because the walking path is on the left if you're walking down Old Post towards Boston Post. Um, so they have to cross back over um, and there's no guidance or really um, clear way to do that. So we're looking for um, for that to be investigated and also uh, for something to be put in there to, to help guide the kids. So um, actually, uh, at the Safe Rooster School meeting on uh, Monday morning, uh, sorry, Tuesday morning, uh, this was brought up. Uh, I asked if they could send me kind of a schematic of what they were asking for. Uh, they did send that to me, I think either Monday afternoon or Tuesday, uh, Tuesday afternoon or Wednesday. Uh, I did, uh, I'm going to forward that to our traffic engineer, uh, Matt Carmody from AKRF. Um, I, I think I also uh, sent an email to the board, to the commission. Uh, showing some of the conceptual designs we've, we've already looked at. Uh, you know, obviously the, um, you know, we talk about the Orient, I'm sorry, the old post road area in general. Uh, part of that plan did incor incor incorporate some crosswalks uh, towards uh, closer to the uh, Boston post road uh, intersection. I can follow up there. Uh, and I know there was a separate request about a crosswalk, the way I interpreted it was a crosswalk across um, uh, at Rushmore across Orienta. Uh, and I, I, I noted that uh, when we did our follow up from uh, the Orienta walking assessment study, uh, there were several recommendations. Uh, there was a recommendation on some crosswalks, not at that location, but uh, further up closer to uh, Hall Street, where there's an existing sidewalk. Uh, but it's, to get back to this, uh, uh, I am following up based on what we discussed at the Safe Boost to School meeting. And I can follow up as far as the Old Post Road, uh, Boston Post Road intersection. Uh, it's a, there's, a, it's a, there's some tricky issues over there, uh, and, uh, but I'll, I'll follow up with uh, our engineer on that. Thanks, guys. Any attention you can give this, we'd appreciate. Yeah, no, thank you. I mean, it seems like there was an assessment already done. Yeah, well, well, the, yeah. Um, the assessment, um, I, I can't recall how uh, technical the assessment got, especially about old poster. I think the, the larger request was for a sidewalk. Uh, you know, that was, we did look at that. I mean, it's a, 
fairly expensive proposition, about you know one and a half million dollars to do that. Uh, but uh, some of the other stuff is uh, more low hanging fruit. It looks like is that part of the larger oriented sidewalk uh, um, capital? Um, <clears throat> they were looked at individually, but you know that's the type of project that if there was funding for it, I would I would recommend to kill two birds with one stone. You have a contractor mobilized; he's in the area, or she is in the area, and you let them uh, just knock everything out at once. Uh, it's, it would only get more expensive as in future years. Materials rising. Is, is the uh, area on Old Coast Road by McDonald's part a separate issue? Because that was it, also it, yeah. There, there, there's some issues out there with um, you know, what, the two lane. The yeah, two one lane. Yeah. Well, what we what, you know, one of the things we had always looked at was if uh, there was going to be any sort of land use approval or you know legislative approval required for the McDonald's then that might be an opportunity to uh, horse trade for lack of a better term uh, but with the recent uh, improvements they made that was uh, done simply through a, a building permit process there was no land use board approvals required so there's no opportunity to really try and uh, work in some public benefits when that sidewalk is that that would be along the basin side of that they would be yeah, suggesting would be on the, so that road up to gullies yeah, that so it's basically uh, an east west road old post road so it'll be on the south side so the north side is the one that's closest to post road where the apartments are the south side is kind of the the fairway uh, not the fairway green well, the fairway green and called the hampshire side That makes sense. I mean, it yeah. seems like it's being. Yeah, you know, we're, we're we're following up on on these requests as they come in. The email that Nova sent kind of explains the same thing. With the yeah. Crosswalk. Yeah. I um, didn't understand the area, so I asked for the. Yeah, that, that was you know I'm I'm a, a visual type person, so I said, I think I understand what you're asking about. If you could put you know draw me a map. I mean, the the, the, the re reason I bring it up, I, I remember that there's an orient a sidewalk item in the capital budget plan. That's correct. And I remember remembering that that uh, I was going to advocate for it to be get a higher priority because it it seems like that that area needs needs more. But I'm not sure if it, we're talking about if that's included in that or or if. if I, I think there were two separate items. One was uh, strictly for the old post road, and the second was for the Oriental improvements. Mm -hmm. and I think that was uh, uh, the memo that I had uh, AKRF prepare. Uh, back in March this year, I, what I did is I had asked them to uh, go over all the various projects they're working on, uh, assign some cost estimates to it, so I could put it in the capital budget. Mm -hmm. So you know, give the board a flavor of, of what what's out there, and you know, help establish some priorities for how we're going to spend our our resources. Okay, so I guess we'll talk about that. In a, you know, when we talk about capital, it's yep. All right. Thanks, guys. Thank you, Athena. Thank you, guys. Uh, you know, hey Glenn, I don't know if this is Glenn Tippett or another Glenn, but I will uh, allow them. Uh, Glenn, please unmute yourself. I'm just, I'm just watching the meeting. No uh, question. OK. Uh, thank you. Uh, and then uh, the other attendee is Mr. Gonlag, but I think he's already, that's uh, he's the same as the 917 number. Uh, with the 412 North Barry. Yep. All right. Um, you can promote him. We'll, we'll oh, just he, cover he, it. He's okay. Yeah. Uh, we'll just need to. All right, Justin. Well, I think. Um, I think Hi, can you hear me? Yes. Okay. All right. Thanks. All right. So, Sorry, having audio issues. Can you hear me now? Yep. Okay, great. Um, so, so I, I think the item may have been addressed in the last meeting. Um, so I just wanted to find out where we stood. I know my wife almost got hit the other day, even though the uh, stop sign got put on North Barry, which we were quite happy about for other reasons. It, it doesn't seem to negate the, the problem we're facing. We, As we drive out of our driveway from the Hellstead health, side of North Barry, if cars are traveling, we can't see them because of the vehicles parked uh, on the side of the road. 
So we've had quite a few near misses. Um, right now we reverse our car into our driveway so we can see when we come out, but that still isn't help. So I've seen in other neighborhoods, those mirrors that get put across the road. So you have a view of cars coming. And that's what I was hoping to do for us if, if that's something that's possible. I can follow up on that. I know that I did ask uh, building department to uh, look at the North Barry area, as well as the, the old post road Royal place area mm -hmm. or the hall and Royal area, I'm sorry, uh, uh, to look for visual obstructions. Um, and, and, you know, a car is you know, blocking that's, you know, I think you, you, that's probably a similar issue you'd have along most any driveway along uh, that stretch of North Barry Avenue. Um, yeah, yeah well, what I've noticed is it's a little trickier if two cars park in front of a house. So some cars, some houses have more space for cars to park. Ours seems to be two cars just fit tightly. So cars are parking very close to the edge of our driveway. So there, there's no visibility looking to the Halstead side. Is there any ordinance as far as how far you can park to someone's driveway or as long as you're not blocking in? It's I'll, I'll take a look at the state law. I think it's, you just can't block a driveway. I think you can come pretty close. I mean, that's, that's a problem we have in a lot of areas. Really see a lot more in Washingtonville because uh, you know, they're so narrow and you know, some of those driveways are right on top of each other. And there are yeah, some no, there's driveways one. that are literally far enough to accommodate exactly one vehicle. Right. With inches to spare on both sides. And, and the distance of the road would, when you're backing out in, in the areas that we're discussing, actually bring you on to like a sidewalk to have yeah. to maneuver. But in, in the instance of, of maybe deflecting the mirror and possibly in his area, you know, at, if you go down on Carroll and Beach, you'll, you'll notice some lines even up around here. If, if you could paint maybe a possible, you know, barrier lines where car vehicles can actually park, so, giving hit them the capability of pulling in and out, maybe starting from that point so to give them some relief. Those, where we have those lines, I really haven't been you know, keeping up with those or doing those new ones. Those are really to establish the where the driveways are. They're not really establishing where the parking areas are. Uh, and I think we, we pretty much typically put them right at the the edge of the driveway. We don't put them back, you know, a foot or two feet. Or measuring that spot, if it only warrants one vehicle, like what is the actual measurement for one vehicle to park? 40 feet, so 30 feet? If, if we were to, when, when we design and paint parking spaces, the, the, the stall is usually eight to nine feet wide by 20 feet in length. That's for a parallel. Uh, parking space along a roadway, uh, but you know we we don't paint uh, spaces in residential neighborhoods. Uh, one of the reasons being is that um, what we found is that we would have less parking available overall because we would design the parking spaces in accordance with engineering standards. Whereas you know lacking lines, people will, will park closer and max maximize the uh, the available parking area. Right. But hindsight, if there is only fake number 25 spaces and you want to maximize a space, we're doing an injustice by maximizing a space because you're not, you're, you're basically in layman's term, cramming a car in where in a spot where maybe one vehicle really should only be. And having two vehicles there is impeding the ability for them to pull in and out of their driveway. Oh, yeah, so wait, wait, maximizing wait. space to, to have over parking is causing an issue as well. We have to control it. If, if, if that's a recommendation to consider painting parking spaces on every residential street in the village, that's, that's a pretty daunting task. And I, I don't know if, uh, no, but I, I would, but you could always, you know, maybe the, the alternative is to, you know, just eliminate a parking space. You know, you know, that, that, that's always a, uh, an option. You can just say from the northern side of the driveway to a point X number of feet east or north or west thereof. 
something like that. I think the tough thing with Mr. Gonlug's request is like, is the precedent, like, I know it almost seems like tit for tat, but like the precedent that we would set by put like installing one mirror for one resident, like, would we go down the line then or like what? Well, I mean, we, we have mirrors throughout the, uh, in the village. I, I think usually you see we have a lot more uh, traffic, like uh, a shopping center or an apartment complex, because, you know, uh, in the case of a residential unit, you're talking maybe on, on like the busiest day, six or seven, you know, six or eight trips. Whereas with uh, an active shopping center or an apartment complex, in, complex you could have hundreds of uh of uh trips a day yeah robert um in looking through some old minutes there was a request <clears throat> for a, a mirror on standish place some years ago so i went there to see if there was a mirror but there wasn't yeah. so i'm guessing that yeah it's a dead end street i don't know why he requested it well i Maybe think they, exiting they, onto harrison i don't know i think was part of that was also road. that it that's a state road uh harrison avenue is route 127 so there's a little, that's a little uh, more complex. Uh, I know this is like on the record, but off the record, like if he put up a mirror on the other side and. I, I, I generally would not recommend people install things on public right of way because it's yeah, and, and My concern was that is like, it needs to be installed properly. Like I would hate for like, it, I installed it and like it reflected sun onto oncoming traffic. Um, I, I could ask my neighbors to put it on their land, so set it back. Um, but it, you know, I, I I didn't realize this wasn't something that. But it sounds like it's done in some places, but not others. I I think it was Rye where I've seen more of them um, at, on residential spots. So. Didn't they say there was a liability issue? I mean, there, there could be well, there's a liability issue if someone puts something on our on our property without our permission and it somehow damages. Would there be a liability issue if we put it up too? Um, yeah, it, there would, but I think when we are administering our own public right of way, yeah. uh, there's, there's, there's a re there are reasons why you do it. Uh, you know, fact is like uh, Mr. Conlove just mentioned, you know, we will make sure it gets installed. Yeah. I'm just trying to yeah. brainstorm how to help yeah. him without dismissing you, Mr. Gon. Like that's yeah. all. Like, um, but I, then, I, I, I mean, I can go out there and actually, I can work with our engineer and our new engineer and look at uh, the driveway, and see if there's a specific recommendation. Yeah, there. no, he'd appreciate that. Like, I don't want to. I think it's a yeah. valid concern. Just don't want to. Yeah. I thought at our last meeting when we talked about it, it was the police um, representative who's kind of nixed it and said it was not appropriate. I don't know if, if he wants to make a comment. Do you recall that? Oh, I thought the fire department said it. The fire yeah. department. Oh, okay. Right? Not the police. Right, correct. Okay. The fire department. Yeah. Fire department reserved comment on the matter because, as I explained on that Zoom, it's a little bit harder. It's easier for me in person. Um, when they first came out with the individual uh, signs for crosswalk and enhanced the crosswalk at Barry and Brook, North Barry and Brook, one of our fire trucks was coming back from a call avoided the sign in the middle of the road. And because the poles that they've now corrected used to lean out, this would be the same thing, an object leaning out. We uh, smashed and broke the mirror on the black and orange fire truck that belongs to volunteer engine hose. And I stand corrected when I spoke to you folks the last time, one of our volunteer firefighters was injured by the glass that when, when the mirror came back in, hit the pole, there you go. it struck the window, breaking the window, shattering, putting glass in his eye, he had to go to the hospital. Oof. So, not only to say that on Dan's deal, the mirror cost us 1500 bucks to replace on the truck. So I, I was saying if erecting a mirror on any utility pole that hangs out 10 feet or lower in the roadway becomes an obstruction for the fire apparatus that they can actually accidentally. And again, yeah. in daytime, I could see it. Nighttime is going to be very difficult yeah. to see. Yeah. And I can imagine North Barry is a major uh, it's tight road, it well, but, it, but it's also an arterial it's road. Road fair. Yes. Yeah, it's, it's getting you from it's point A to road. point B. Yes, absolutely. That's why I reserve comment like that because we had had that happen in a different instance. This would possibly be a repeat of the same because if you erect the mirror, you're figuring you're erecting the mirror higher than a car, but our trucks travel at 10 feet high, and that would be a target for us by accident. Thank yeah, I, I would never want anything installed that could put any anyone like that um, 
in harm's way i i had envisioned it being set back on the other side of the sidewalk but i i don't really know much about the policies around these things you know then you could get the opinion like maybe yeah, even if it's a personal recommendation like hey ask your neighbor this or that whatever yeah, i mean i i have to imagine it's got to be a, you know installed at a specific height uh at a specific distance in order for whoever is using it to be able to see what's what's coming properly it, it's got to be yeah i, I gotta imagine it can't it must be within a certain parameter right does he think that if there's only one car park there that's a good question. Did you hear the question, Justin? If there's no. a car park there, like is the visibility improved? Sorry, it only, if, if, could if you there's say that one, again? If there's only one car parked in front of your property, is the visibility improved? I, I think so, but I, I can't fully tell. Um, it, it's difficult to say. Is it? Is it is it residential parking or is it maybe school related parking or I mean do you do you find that cars are parked there all day or is it just uh, uh, they come and go? It, it, it's all day. It's it's mainly residential neighbors and you know a lot of garden service uh, vehicles park there and that's normally the trickier things when they're bigger trucks, um, you know that load lawn mowers and stuff. Those things are massive and you can't see past them, but. It's it's really just residential. We're not close enough to the school to ever have people park uh, for that reason. Teachers and they have staff. enough parking over there. Yeah. I don't think so. But, yeah, but see. I was just thinking it reminded me of when off on Mimarinic Avenue, somebody had the same problem, but you were worried about the apartment building. All the houses in that on that street have long driveways and there are no apartment buildings. So I don't see yeah. it, it to try to spot. Well, yeah, I mean, the fact is, is, you know, as a general thought, residential development is a lot different now than it was, you know, when these homes were built. I mean, the average American family in 1950 may have owned one car. The average American family nowadays has two, three, let's see, See, yeah, I'm, I'm, proudly, I'm yeah. proudly below average as a family uh, with one vehicle. But um, I just I wonder if people are parking on the street because other people don't feel comfortable backing oh, yeah. out on the street. So is this sort of feeding itself? That it, Justin, do you are you do you think that your neighbors are parking on the street, or is it more just the the um, uh, guard, garden gardeners and, and the and the lawn crews it, it's definitely a combination like like one of the other gentlemen said you know some neighbors here have more than two cars or they are in a multi-family like across the road with a shared driveway so i think some of them then have their teenagers parking there as well so it, it's sort of a combination and it's you know the, the cars will rotate in front of my house daily. It's not like there's one or two cars. It's it's numerous cars that rotate in those spots throughout the week. Do you think, Dan, it's worth, uh, as you said um, a few minutes ago, just to making a visit with the yeah. the engineer and yeah. seeing kind of what we what what there's to work with? Yeah, absolutely. Is it if it's like uh, blocking? It's removing a space or painting. I still think painting out a line is not the worst thing. Right, or reducing right? it to just a one vehicle parking right I mean, there. It is precedent setting, but but that is a that is one of the feeder. What, what do you call that? A collector. It, no, no. Uh, is, it, is it a collector? It, it's either a collector or an art. I know it's a collector. Uh, collectors go to the arterials. Right. So so it's a collectors, and and we know that there's issues with Barry. We've. I mean, we haven't. None of us have been on this this commission very long. And we have a berry issue every single meeting. Yeah. So there's clearly stuff going on there. And I think, I think the school also, it's like, yeah, heavily uh, it connects yeah. major roadways. Yeah. 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 You have uh, Northbury Avenue between uh, essentially Mamaronic, the, the extension, the and, and Halstead. Then you have Halstead down to um, uh, Post. And not to mention, you have a firehouse over there. Uh, we have a public park there. Uh, there is at least one uh, nursery school. Yes. 
Corner uh, Grove in North Barry, the country yeah. school. Um, religious, religious institutions. It's a, it's a busy it, place. It's a busy place. We'll admit that traffic has changed. And what was a simple pass through is now a service road. <laughs> It has yeah. it's changed in more ways than one. We, we didn't forget the Carmel. 70, year, <laughs> 60 years ago, 60 years ago, North Bay Avenue went all the way out to Mamaroneck Avenue. Yes. Uh, and you know, you saw a few cars here and there. You know, you didn't see a repetitive flow. The population of the village in 1920 was, can be counted on four fingers. Uh, it hasn't been that way in many, many. Years. Thank you, Justin. Appreciate you um, hanging in there and dealing with us as we work through this with you. Yeah, no, thanks. I appreciate all your time and consideration, really. Thank you so much, everyone. All right, we're going to move on to, there's no one else on the line, right? Uh, no one who hasn't already had an opportunity to speak. Oh, awesome. So we're going to move on to, uh, and Dan, we can use your help with this, just putting it on the uh, the screen. Like the, the first item that's listed with uh, the new business is the request for a stop sign on um, <clears throat> Taylor's Lane. And this area actually, maybe not the immediate street, but this same area has been brought up before, similar to Ryan's point, like, you know, listening for common themes and motifs of like where people are identifying pain points. Um, if you go to uh, Taylor's Lane and Shadow Lane. And even have two kids walking in the street via Google Maps. <laughs> okay. Share my screen for the benefit of those watching. And so the ask here is for stop signs uh, in both directions, which to me, it seems like a no brainer. Like there's no sidewalk the same area as it comes out to post road post roads, obviously a major road and arterial road. Um, and I have, I've actually walked this route a bunch of times with my wife to get down to the uh, preserve down at the end. And uh, the traffic and the speed that cars go down there is insane. It's very quick. Um, seems like a simple fix to put in fix, but. So I, mean, I, I did, you know, kind of look at this, the, and what I've told you, you know, yeah. Engineering does not was demonstrated that stop signs do not slow down traffic. Um, a car is back up to speed within 150 feet. And this section of Taylor's Lane between Shadow and Post Road is close to 900 feet long. So you're not addressing a speeding issue by putting a stop sign in. Yeah. Uh, so this this came up last year, um, and the the street that they were asking for stops on is Cottage. Oh, no, no, Shadow. Shadow is the cross street. I know that's what they're asking here, but there was another street. I think it's Cottage. Uh, two, two. Well, further south, you have Barrymore. Um, anyway, there was another street, not not far from well, Shadow, the, that they were at. Well, so you you have uh, on one side of the Taylor's Lane side is Taylor's Lane. The other side is. Um, no, it's on Taylor's Lane. I'm talking about. There was another street where people specifically claimed about speeding, and they wanted a stop sign because speeding. Um, we chose not to give them a stop sign because stop signs were not easily approved. Yeah. You know, even if we slow up this car slow for 150 feet, I still think that's something. And you know, half the requests here are for stop signs and. I think they do something. I, I know. Again, but you know, listen, you can make the recommendation. Right. And, you know, if, if that's the recommendation the commission makes, that you know, I'll bring it to the board. I'll also let them know what the professional staff's opinion is. I will say, like, because we've gone through this with residents before, too, and I walk the, I live right over by North Barry, and I walk that area specifically. Um, one, because there's a side, big sidewalk to walk yeah. to, and I like to look at the traffic and see what that new stop sign on, I believe it's Brook. Um, has added and like everyone that calls in always has positive things to say about the stop sign there. I, I understand. And like I, I agree with you, Dan. And like, but like I feel like 
yeah, like we're helping the residents. Maybe it creates the, you know, the illusion or impression. And so that helps slow down traffic. Like maybe it's bigger than the data. I don't know. Like I but, but, so, but, and there's some difference between, you know, uh, Northbury Avenue is, is a much different type of road than Taylor's Lane. Northbury Avenue, again, it's a collector road bringing traffic from Halstead to, well, from Amaranek Avenue to Halstead to Post Road. Taylor's Lane is a road that uh, takes a small residential area to Post Road. But also they're different in the sense Taylor's Lane doesn't have a sidewalk. And like the Google Maps has two kids walking down in the roadway of Taylor's Lane. And, you know, as you called out, it's 900 feet long with all shrubbery on the side. So people- And curved. And curb, And people can get the idea that you just blow also, down. It's not curved at the Shadow Lane intersection. It's curved further, further, further south on Taylor's Lane. That's right. Oh Taylor's Lane itself what about is speed bumps? problem. Now. Yeah, speed humps. I'm just thinking something because there's no sidewalk <clears throat> and it's very tight there. I, I, again, I, 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 we can look at the accident data. I'm, I'm, I'm going to assume that the accident data is very limited. Yeah, because I mean, that, that's the, you know the reason why stop signs are installed is to. Uh, where you have sufficient accident data, which is, you know, and all we stop is for intersection. We have five or more accidents in a 12 month period, uh, or you have some uh, other visual obstruction issue, which I don't know if that this intersection would meet those types of, of warrants. Um, I, I know we're all here to, you know, meet of the minds and try to figure out a best option what would you suggest? I would suggest, you know, let's see what the accident data is and quantify if there's an actual issue there. What, you know, what a perceived issue is not the same as an actual issue. So if we take it to another thought process on that it's an area that is a pedestrian area, cars and, and, and residents are asking for some sort of assistance the long term would be to look at the data and see what the outcome is. What can we do in the short term to possibly bring some light to that intersection where we could help them out? Is there something else? Is there some other new apparatus? Is there? Well, I know that I think what, what I rec recall that with the shadow lane request, I think that the police department deployed the speed wagon out there and yeah, and you know the incidence of speeding was was limited. Well, it's so helpful because I mean our street is like a thoroughfare on Washington Street, but once that once that apparatus is there, it does its job. So it's not it for us. It doesn't pick up the speeding because you could see it clearly, and and they slow it down. Right. So it's yeah. doing its job. But, and, Can we put something like that there to do well, its we, job? We can certainly. I can certainly, you know, talk to the chief and see if it can be put on the schedule. Uh, you know, a lot of that stuff has really been deployed around the schools, uh, especially, you know, this this is we're in school year now, so um, we uh, that's where our, our efforts have been focused. Uh, but it's certainly something we can I can always ask the chief. And that is a temporary solution. I mean, we did put the speed sensor on West Street a few months back, and that helped. Yeah, I think it helps for a few months, but after that. You know, I keep thinking about what you said, make the drivers uncomfortable, even a stop sign or speed well, I mean, humps or something would make them a little more comfortable. Well, it's the, unco the uncomfortable is, um, and I, I was watching a, a video on YouTube over the weekend, and it's, and this is really kind of put it perfectly. You can have a speed limit set for a road, but if the road is, is, isn't is designed for that speed, people will, it's, 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 I, it's human behavior. Well, this, is the, you know, this is the road dieting. I mean, that yeah. road is wide, it's flat. It feels like you can go fast. Yeah, not a lot of Nobody's houses. Nobody's looking. And that's, uh, that's you why. Slow, you slow things down by, I mean, it, you know, you bring up a good point. And, you know, I, I think one of the first meetings we ever had was um, uh, about that uh, uh, stand. Is it um, right over by where you live, Rob? Where, where the, the, Rockland? The, yeah, Rockland. And that's a that's a way to connect to um, the trail, right? Mm -hmm. And so that's how I got to know that. You're making mention of this is how you and your family walk to the preserve, right? And so I feel like we don't really ever think about how 
our walkways in this committee are connecting to natural assets that we have in our village that make it like a really like a good quality of life. I mean, people are here because there's a trail that connects, you know, uh, and you can jog and, and be outdoors. You go, you can walk to the preserve. So how do we make this, if this is the path to get to the preserve for many people coming off of North Barry, why can't we develop this into something that is a bike lane? It is a, it is a pedestrian pathway. We limit the limit, make it skinnier and slow everybody down by making them uncomfortable. Well, and, and I think, uh, I think I've shown you what we did over at uh, on Tompkins near Union Avenue, where we, uh, we tightened the intersection by uh, hatching out certain areas, I think had a, a pretty pretty uh, good uh, impact. I, I, I think you know lane markings, things like that. That those are the types of things that really put the the driver at uh, an ill sense of ease, which uh, I always think is a good thing. Yeah, Rob. So good again. Last year, this came up several times about Taylor's Lane. At one of our meetings, the chief was there. And they put a, a speed monitor there, and uh, I don't know the speed monitors there. People slow, but the determination was that there was no speeding. There was also an issue about the gas station at uh, Boston Post Road that was problematic in exiting and entering the, the gas that gas station because it was right at the entrance to Boston Post Road. There were issues with the foliage at the corner of uh, Boston Post Road and uh, Taylor's Lane where you couldn't see because there was too much foliage. You know, there were a lot of issues there um, and we never really came to any uh, satisfactory conclusions how to, and the problem is it's such a long stretch. If you put a stop sign, I think somebody mentioned, you put a stop sign on one of the streets, the stretch is so long that once you get past the stop sign, the problem is the kids walking to school along along um, Taylor's Lane that there's no sidewalk, it's curvy, bad weather, and, and the parents are concerned that it's, it's dangerous. And I don't know how to resolve that, how to solve that problem. We know the sidewalk, like the point you brought up when they asked for a sidewalk over by Oriente, you said there's a million and a half dollar commitment or whatever it may be, as opposed to whether they're yeah, I mean, high visibility they're, they're, signs. Or the old poster, it's, it's a lot. That's a much bigger uh, issues we have to deal with. Yeah, my point is, like, yeah. if you put a like, personally, like the true solution is to have a sidewalk there where people can walk down and get to the preserve, get to the school, etc. But like, that's a way bigger initiative than speed hump, stop signs, like understanding that you know the data is not quantified there, or signage, the high visibility signage, letting people know there's kids here, etc. I mean, the one saving grace we do have is that, you know, over on Taylor's Lane, uh, our site, you know, you know, we have a, a pretty wide uh, area between the, uh, uh, the uh, fence and the, uh, and, the, and the road. So it does, it is a, a, play, a refuge for- Can you go to the corner of Boston Press Road and go to this gas station? It's considered a refuge for it's a long stretch on the right side where all those weeds are like knee high. Yeah. I used to walk that. Well, there were complaints about cars entering and exiting the gas station as cars were coming down. That, that was a concern. Yeah. We never solved that problem either. No, no, I think we. And the foliage there, right? Yeah, the Public floor. Works is, is looking that, at that. Right there. Yeah. We, we're, we're, we're looking at that cleaning that up. Um, you could walk back. Well, we can, it doesn't seem like we have consensus. Um, well, the only thing that I worry about bothers me is that is Robert mentioned and other folks is that there's issues, there's several issues on this Taylor's lane and it's just in a stain. Yeah. Well, yeah, again, we're, we are, we're gonna do the, we're gonna take care of the, um, the, the growth here, which should open up uh, the intersection for, or should open up the, uh, the visual uh, uh, observations for anyone who's making a turning movement here, especially you know, really either left or right. Perhaps as like a short term as we could ask the police department for the um, the speed sign as well as if possible, it could work into the increased enforcement. 
versus speed. Let me check one thing. Uh, Does that count um, vehicles as well? That apparatus. Um, I think it count. Yeah, I think I think it does count uh, uh, vehicles. I'm not sure, but I think it has to because it determines what the average speed is. So, so that if it if it's counting that. Yeah, I guess the one the one issue. Um, my my recollection is there's very little traffic. Traffic. Yeah, I mean it, it's it's a residential neighborhood. I mean the people who are, it's yeah. I think come back the same way. You know the uh, a couple of occasions. I think uh, Tom has said it. Best he said the mayor's. Uh, we've seen the enemy, and it is us. Yeah, yeah. Um, but uh, you know one of the issues. I, I think you it would be easier to put a a speed sign for the traffic going this way. Yeah. Uh, looking at. Uh, We'd have to actually deploy the uh, the mobile trailer for the traffic going towards uh, post road because there, there's nothing to attach one of those uh, signs to. I was looking at the Google Maps, like on the corner of Taylor uh, Taylor's Lane and Colonial Court. Someone even put out into the That's roadway. The yeah, put out a uh, you know one of the little figurines to slow traffic down. What about putting high visibility signs, signage up now in the short term? Like I see a sign on a telephone pole. I don't know if it's just well, crossing it, or what. But you know, a, slow curve ahead. I mean, maybe if that could be touched up. Uh, yeah, it says no outlet. Uh, yeah. yeah I, mean, I, I think most of the pedestrian activity is going to take place on the uh, east side of the road on the right. I call the Taylor's Lane side because the west side, um, yeah, it's really not that. Uh, yeah, so yeah, we also I think we concluded Taylor's Lane by saying it's really in Rhinek, and there was a discussion about bringing in the Rhinek traffic, but they don't have a traffic commission. And now recently, I think there was some communication with the Rhinex schools. Yeah, reach out to them. So yeah. why, why don't we ask them to weigh in on this and have them make some recommendations? I, I the issue is, you know, the there is a we have a safe route to school committee, which um, and but I would say I think the only person on, who attends that who really even comes close to representing one Rhinex would be the RyY, and that's really. They're, I think they're more global in their perspective. It's really from the Marriott School District. Yeah, I mean, my understanding is that the last time there was a... But I think Brian was trying to... Because Brian used to have their own yeah. way back when, and I think Brian was trying to reach out to see if there was any interest. In yeah, I mean, the, the... They said they were interested in talking like this, and we hear from the residents all the time. And I was like, well, direct them our way, or if you want to... However you want to do it, if you want to meet, if you want to yeah. collect everything, like I think there's there's like a Rye Moms Facebook Facebook group that's pretty uh, organized, um, I, and they've made sporadic requests over the years. Um, I, I I think maybe six or seven years ago there was a, a group that was trying to be active. We actually applied for so Judge Gallagher was involved. Well, that that was that was more recent than when Judge Gallagher was involved. Uh, we actually applied for a grant uh, to do some uh, sidewalk uh, installations in, uh, I think it was focused more on North Barry Avenue, uh, but uh, you know they were, there was a group that helped us with that. Uh, we didn't get a grant. Uh, and I recall that uh, uh, Judge Gallagher, when he was simply village resident, Dan Gallagher, uh, was pretty active in uh, Safe Rooster to School for Ryanek, but I think that was in the 80s or 90s. Um, and again, I don't think they've had any uh, active organized presence from a what I call the Safe Roots to School program. Not, not right. uh, Safe Roots to School is a real, that's an organized program with you know, real resources. The uh, RIY is part of it because they're the ones that helped get it started. And yeah. Yeah, yeah, and, and, and RIY has helped us in the past um, you know, the, and I mentioned the, the grant that we got for Halston Avenue, part of what underpinned that was a study that the RIY helped organize about 10 years ago. Uh, but again, I think, like I said, it's, it's a, the, uh, the Mamaronek School, Safe Roots to School Committee is a, a lot more active. Uh, and, you know, I think we had, you know, there's gonna, when we have the meeting, it's, you know, it's, 
we have representatives from uh, the Safe Future School Committee, each of the each of the uh, each of the schools, the PTAs. Yeah, uh, at Monday's meeting, Senator Mayor, uh, State Senator Mayor was there. Uh, there was a representative from Assemblyman Otis's office. Um, yeah, and, and if the county executive could clone himself 15 times, <laughs> he would be at every meeting everywhere. Uh, I'm sure that he's, uh, uh, even though he's a county executive, he's basically said that, uh, you know, he's represented this community in one way or another for 30 years, and it's, he still, you know, makes us a little bit of a priority. So, uh, but I think, you know, kind of getting the my schools uh, organized through that Safe Foods to School program is uh, a real good way to start. I'll reach out to them again. I mean, I reached out after our last meeting and they, they got back to me pretty quickly, but then it trailed off, but I'll follow up with them. Yeah, well, I can, let me, um, I think when I put together the, um, the grant application last year, I may have gotten someone from uh, one of the PTSAs or PTAs who helped write a letter. I'll see if, if I have that, if I, if I have contact information, I can forward to you. No, thank you, Tina. All right, the next one, uh, I wanna pass it to Robert because he made a site visit, the uh, Hillside? 636 Hillside, yeah. Um, well, I'll be brief. So this gentleman called, he said he was representing nine or 10 families on that street. He said uh, they're speeding there, they have, 20 or so school kids, at least half a dozen are special needs kids, and they're concerned about the speeding. Dan sent around a, uh, some data yep. about that as a result of the Hillside Avenue Bridge, which when I looked at it, didn't indicate that there was really a speeding problem. But their perception is there is. The, the problem is there are no calming traffic signs on that street, and it's a long street, saying, slow down or kids, you know, there's nothing to tell drivers to slow down. Perhaps we can at least put something on there to indicate there's a need to be careful when you're driving on that street. I don't know. I also made a quick site visit yesterday. <clears throat> and so you go down a hill. So the cars tend to go very fast down the hill, but there's also cars parked on the same side that the downhill is. So I'm looking, where could you put a, a common side and sign and I don't see where. So yeah, I, you I put the signs I, on the side. I know um, the, uh, the same resident, you know, called Mr. Six, yeah, several, well, I didn't want to understand, but he, he called several years ago, asked about certain types of signs um, you know, I, I think uh, when I discussed this with the, the former police chief, um, he was very uncomfortable, uh, you know, putting up signs about, you know, children who may have special needs. I mean, that, that, that's, uh, you don't want to, because they're, they're vulnerable. But I don't uh, know, he wants that 80, sign. that's, so he, he has one of those signs where you have the, the green sign, where you have the kid passing mm -hmm. right by his house. I don't know if that does any good, but that's the best well, thing. The thing is, right. so right. that's usually the, the, the children at play thing. Right. And so can I just want to interrupt? Okay. So his big issue is he has two kids and he's thinking of having to build a fence to keep them in because they're special needs and they just go. So he needs to build a fence with a lock so they can't get out. He's concerned that he doesn't have a fence and that the kids, the younger ones, just jut out into the street. That's his concern. Yeah. And there are and other kids like that. Right. Yeah. And, and, and the thing with you know, cho you know, the children at play signs, and I, I think I mentioned this before, that those are supposed to be installed at areas where you have playgrounds and, and parks where you would expect children to be at play. You know, a residential community by its very nature, you would expect to see children there. Uh, it, you know, and, and I think because a sign like that is so, Overused, it loses any effectiveness. What do we do? Yeah. No, well, I again, I, but I, it also comes down to, you know, the perception versus the reality. You know, we had, you know, we had to gather all of this data. I, I, I had I brought copies in case anyone wants to see it. Here, but I read it. Tonight. Do we have? Do we have? Do we have enforcement data? I, we, we we would we could request it. I I, well, I, I, I I've asked this once before. 
because you know we talk about data about speed limits, but I think there should be some analysis of enforcement because we're saying, I, mean, you, I don't know how many times I heard you say, well, this town's gotten bigger in the last 20 years, mm -hmm. right? Yes. Uh, it's gotten bigger. So we should be, we should but be enforcing. And it seems like, the what's that? There's the same amount of police officers on the road as there was before the town got bigger. Yeah, and in order to, the same yeah, in order to right. no, and and I and I by by no means am an expert in in traffic enforcement, and I'm not, I'm not no, saying I'm I am. Just say I'm just all I'm not, saying is like, they, if they can't be everywhere at the same time, so it's hard, right? That you have so much more that needs to be enforced, but you don't have that an extra. Mm -hmm. Well, I don't know if it's, I wait, wait, I don't know. Wait a second, I don't know if that makes sense to me. No, that that there's that because you have more people, there needs to be there is more to enforce. You have the same geographic space. So if you have more people breaking the law in, in a space, it, it doesn't mean that, does that require more police officers? Yes. We're right. way more busy. I was here in 2012, I'll tell you now, in 2022, the call volume, the amount of time spent doing what we're doing, so yeah. bail reform and everything, takes a lot longer, things going on. Yeah. We don't have to we were just, we just hired four cops and we're still, I'll just give you a blank you. number because as a traffic commissioner, I, we have a neighborhood association as well. And we just got numbers for our general area for the month of September to present. And that was 330 calls in that one area. But you know, like that surprised me because yeah. I didn't, you visually, I mean, you visually don't see it until you see the number. And then you're like, oh, you know, it kind of, it kind of like pushed me to a different little realm. I don't, I don't mean to put uh, uh, firefighter Loaco on the spot, but how many calls are you going to that are automatic alarms? And how many of those automatic alarms turn out being minor or nothing? Yeah, but you, but you, you can't. Not to just all negative, you can't not show up when the alarm no, goes on. You're required to respond to all alarms at yeah. all times, any time of the day, any time of the night. Yeah. And the difference what? between, between um, like responding to a call and then traffic enforcement? So when, when we're not responding to calls, we enforce, we have the time to do it. Right. So it's, Unless, it's, you know, something comes out and there's a detail for yeah, I mean, someone the, the, going to be assigned specifically that. I remember there was an issue on Baldwin years ago. The postcard was sent to Baldwin Avenue for between certain times. Watch this, document it, enforce it, whatever you want to do. Never yeah. know what happens. Yeah. That was my yeah. And, yeah. And, you know, kind of getting back to the manpower issue, a lot of those details, you know, um, some you know, there are traffic enforcement grants that we get right. on an annual basis that allow us to pay overtime for police officers to be able to do those. So it's it, do you guys not have a traffic car or is that the same? We have they do the people traffic. assigned to the traffic unit who handle most B and T type of stuff. Um, they are not assigned to patrol, so they're not responding to those disputes or alarms or whatever we might be going to. They're specific, they can, and if we need them, they will, but they're specifically assigned yeah. to the traffic unit and they take care of. But that's only two cars for the whole building. Two cars yeah. for. But again, yeah, yeah, we have 54, was it 54 sworn officers? Awesome. Yeah, but that, that includes, you know, the senior, the chief, the yeah. lieutenants, yeah. Um, and, you know, three tours uh, and a, uh, you know, three and a half square mile village. So even like, during, if everyone is, you know, on tour, you know, we may have, uh, you know, 15 to 18 officers in the village at any given time. Uh, and it's, you know, during, you know, certain periods you know, in the morning, you know, there's a lot of work focused on areas around the schools. Uh, it's, it's, uh, it's finding uh, items for, for which we can assign and task police officers has never been a problem. But circling back to maybe the problem that maybe the, the traffic is, is flowing in a, in a quicker fashion, how do we recognize it? How do we validate that that's happening to possibly help the resident or residents if there's 10 residents showing a concern? I mean, I know back many moons ago that used to run 
both ways straight down to Marinick Avenue and then they cut it off at Hillside where you could only come into Hillside and make a right or going or going yeah. up the hill. Yeah. Like that's, that's one of the ways I think we, we have definitely reduced the amount of volume there. Right. So maybe that's like a consideration. Maybe we're going to have to or would be a possibility that maybe that turns in not into a two way street at, at some point, maybe to a one way street to avoid, you know, that pass through that that people are creating you know, that pass through coming down and cutting off and getting onto Marinick Avenue, or they're using it to cut up and get onto Barry Avenue. Maybe we can divert them to a different artery if if the findings show that cars are, you know, causing a hazard for, for the families and the and the and the Do residents that are living there. Bridge being closed for a year and got used to the luxury of having their cars drive all day. And that could be a possibility yeah. as well. You know, because it's not so. it's not a route to school because that side of the bridge is right now. Mm -hmm. The other side is Marinick Avenue. Like, how is yeah. there a way to see how many cars travel that way in the day? Oh, I know how many cars. Well, I know how many, I knew how many cars traveled that way in 2018 because that as part of the uh, the grant that we got to replace the bridge, um, we had to uh, conduct an immense amount of intellectual exercises, among which was uh, uh, traffic and, and uh, uh, speed and volume data. So we had to uh, file what's called a final design report with the was state. Was it like a specific number or? I have the answer right here. So for us at Avenue. I know I was. Okay. Now, um, so we, we had to do, um, I, I think we did basically 20 days of traffic data. Uh, what time was it during school? The entire day. No, but was it during the school year? Oh yeah, I think uh, it was during, uh, one was during August, the next was during September. Of what year? This year? 17, August 14th to August 18th, 2017, and September 18th to September 25th, 2017. Um, so the, uh, for those two periods, which encompassed five, 13 days. Over the course of 13 days, there were 8,292 recorded events. So that's 8,292 vehicles over 13 days. Uh, it kind of basically turns out about um, one to two vehicles a minute. And 85% of the traffic for the 85th percentile was 28 miles per hour. At, so the speed limit was 30, it's 25 now. Um, there were uh, 10 recorded incidents of a vehicle going in excess of 50 miles per hour. 50? Yeah. Wow. Or 0.01%. That's pretty small. I mean, it, and, but you know, this is, obviously we don't have this data for every area. I mean, you know, to do that for to do a study like this cost a couple of thousand dollars. So you know, we don't we're not doing that every single time. We can't just we can't, just can't do that every single time. We have uh, signage for like the weight limits on the bridge there. Like there's telephone poles that are there. Yeah. And in fact, like I was going through the Google Maps and well, like, with with um, the new bridge, um, it had so it had to be designed uh, because of the state grant that it's unrestricted. We can still legislate and regulate the, the size of the trucks, but it has to be designed to accommodate anything. But so that gives even more space to signage for high visibility but, signs. You know, the, the thing is it's not an attractive area for trucks because they can go over one bridge, but they can't go over the North Barry Avenue bridge. They can't go over the Hillside Avenue bridge over the train tracks and they can't get under the, the track, the train. So it's, they, so it's the, that space, that real estate for high visibility signs on the block. Yeah, we, we, we can look at it. I mean, it, it's we can always look at what signage that we can we can incorporate. Uh, but again, you know, the there's the perception, and then you know what what the data demonstrates. And you know, I, would the Google Maps show us what signs are there now, or is it not a? Uh, I, I well, we have, I, I don't think we put any signs up. There's no sign. 
Yeah, June still shows the weight limit from sign. from uh, Howard to. Is there a state Jefferson. limit sign? Well, no, no, no. Um, that's because that that weight limit sign is because of the railroad bridge. That's Metro North sign. That's not our sign. But like I said, it's it's. But is there even a speed limit sign? I don't, I don't uh, I'm not sure there's a speed limit sign, but I, I looked the whole street. It's, it's, I didn't see any sign, any traffic related sign. Parking, there are parking signs. That's but you know we have speed limit signs all over the village. I understand, but if they're complaining, at least if you try that, maybe it'll yeah. maybe help. There's poles that like we can already to use. I, I, again, I can, I can look at what type of signs we have out there. Because they did say like every family, and I know like they just said that, and it's like you know we could ask them to all come to the meeting and sign the petition, like. Maybe we do that. Like, I don't know, but it just seems like speaking to. Yeah, so I, I think one of the things, solid. you know, obviously, I think, thing. you know, Andy hit the big point is, or, or sorry, Tina, uh, you know, they, they've gone a year, or actually, I'm they're sorry. Used, they're not used they to went, the they went just under, it went about 11 months without, 11 months, uh, 11 months, 11 months and a couple of weeks. Mm -hmm. I know. We shut months, down no like time. September 25th last year. Um, so just, just under 11 months. Uh, without vehicles cutting through. All right, let's go to the, the next item of new business. So Dan, you'll at least see what we have available. And yeah. Robert, maybe like you could ask them, maybe if you get a little bit more support from the folks there, if you have a- Well, they've already told us what they want. I'm not sure what I should ask them. Just because- Yeah, but maybe somebody else should- Validate what Robert's saying. Cause well, like- he said there are 10 families. He, the guy right, I spoke so with yeah. representing 10 families right, on that block. Maybe he should ask one of them to write something. Yeah, like quantify that, right? Like I could say, like I want a stop sign. There's everyone saying well, it, but we're they, not. They said, well, I mean, there are, excuse me. They yeah. said they would submit a petition signed at all. Obviously, they didn't because I spoke to Mr. Singh. Do you want a petition from all the families? I can get it. I can so, ask them to do it. Would that be helpful? I, I just want to say, in general, I think there's 12 homes on Hillside yeah, Avenue between a lot of homes. between Jefferson and the, the bridge. Block, though, he said most of the lot. Right, and one of the homes is abandoned. Well, let's just see there. what we have available. We'll, yeah, I'm just not sure what the resolution is going to be. I don't see where a stop sign. But, but uh, you know, does and and maybe the the conceptual question to answer is, uh, and you don't have to answer this now. I'm just asking this rhetorically. Does there need to be uh, right a and based on the data? Right. Maybe yeah. Yeah. Not, does there need to be a resolution? Right. So, I don't really see what the resolution is. It's not apparent. Yeah. With all the cars parked on one side, going down the hill. I think we'll be able to park on both. Uh, no, just one side. One side down. Yeah. And then going up the hill. I, mean, I presume people will go slower up the hill. But, but there's no was... speed limit sign, and there's no, no signs indicating anything to slow down at all. No. But the data shows otherwise. Like I, I see it, but perception, I guess, is also. And it's a long block. It's a long block. You could put up a few signs, and like maybe that'll help. You know, we wouldn't be able to quantify the data again, right? Like. No, I, mean, I, 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 I don't think the board is going to. Yeah, I want to even create some people that took the time. Yeah, they have. The, I mean, th this was a significant, you know, effort right, to, yeah. do, to do this. I mean, it was literally, you know, ten days of or thirteen days of data that that we had to, you know, go through. It was very helpful. <clears throat> So, so what's the resolution? Do you want a petition from? Do you want me to go there and ask them to act collectively? Or do you need a resolution just to add a speed limit sign? No. We can so vote can on we that just now. See if there's yeah, something. Yeah. Well, I know. I, I think so this came up. The question came up about uh, Jefferson. I think there, there, there may be a sign close uh, on Jefferson either. No, nothing okay. was put, the Jefferson from the from those two blocks. You, they would. No, I think there's a sign there. on Jefferson at uh, North Barry. No, no, I, I thought there was a sign closer to uh, uh, the extension down by the park. By right, the but, but, but there was a complaint about speeding on Jefferson for that long stretch, and we said we would put up calming traffic signs or something. Nothing has been put up there. Well, why, why can't we put up a, a, a speed limit sign? That's what I'm saying. We have signs available, like speed limit signs or like slow down, like anything. We have a new speed limit, right? Not yet. Right. Yeah. No, that, 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 that'll go to the board. The board's going to set a public. I anticipate. So can we get a new, can we say that we're going to get, we're going to, when we get a well, new that, speed limit the, signs, we're not going to, we're not well, going to install an old one, right? I have a speed, I have a 25. On well, the, so I, I don't want to get bogged down and go over the last five years of traffic safety stuff in the village. 
Uh, but uh, when the when the village established local speed limits on certain streets at 25 miles per hour, we installed 25, 25 mile per hour speed limit signs all over the village. So there, there are plenty of 25 mile speed limit signs. Aaron, on the side of, um... Can we possibly put a sign there for them? So at least there's. And we could, but you know, that, that's also the thing of do we just, is that the solution for everyone who asks about? And we so, shouldn't set, yeah. Maybe it is. Well, what, what's, so the, the, we have one complaint here? It, well, it, it, it came from one, one, one resident. From multiple families are willing to sign a petition. It's not this street anymore, though. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 No, it's, no, it's, well, let me see if I can. Move, we moved over to Hillside, Hillside, Hillside right? Yeah. yeah. And, Okay, so I mean, so uh, Rob, you think it's it's worthwhile just asking them just to get some some support, and that we're going to be looking at. Uh, well, the question the is, oh, is it is it going to affect us in doing something more if we hear from all the families? That's well, that's I think I think to to Dan's point, if if one family says people are speeding on our street, I need to need um, some traffic calming signage. I don't think we're going to be able to accommodate every one of those requests, but if the percent, and I think I'm a person that believes that it, I'm a data driven decision maker, but perception also is a huge deal. And if you have 10 uh, families saying that their perception is that they're speeding, it's a long block. Yeah, and it's a long and it's a long road, and you guys have looked at it, and you've spoken with them, and they're serious, and there's there's concern with children, and yes, they might need to build a fence, but there's enough things, there's enough other pieces of qualitative data to look at. What's the big deal of putting up a sign when people are speeding there? And there's a good reminder to say that our speed limit in our village is now 25 miles an hour, especially on this long street that people haven't traveled down in a long time because it's been closed for a year. I think that because it's such a steep hill that you should put 25 mile per hour signs so you see it when you come down the hill, but that you don't need to go up. Exactly. Dan, we would I probably put up more signs uh, when the when the when the mayor's uh, you tend to go faster down. Yeah, the hill I, I think well, we're gonna have to swap out more signs when uh, if the board as I expect, we'll lower the village wide speed limit to 25 miles per hour. Just to be clear, <laughs> is the board asking me to approach them and get something from all the families? Are you, Are you, is that yeah, being asked me? I, I don't think you need a I don't, I, Is that appropriate? So to, uh, I mean, they should, they should, that, that should be something that they do. Not, not well, I mean, I, I think, right. yeah, the, the, the question was, um, I would suggest to them. Yes, for them. For them. Yeah, you say, 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 if we want to get, get the resident, the resident who submitted the request yeah. indicated he was representing right. ten property yeah. owners on the street. Yeah, I don't, I don't think you want to be in the uh, as a member of the government. You want to be in, uh, uh, in a position of uh, organizing for. No, 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 no. Right, well, so thanks. Is that a yes or no? Yeah, from the board. As, as long as they are the ones yes. to do it. Yes. 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 Yes, I think that would be really, really okay. good. Yeah. And thanks for going over there, Robert. The uh, so the new business is done. Um, we will cover two of the items in the old business, but I know Robert and Laura had two items that they wanted to cover. I have a long list of things. Did we cover number two? We didn't cover number two today. Hillside? No, Old Boston Post Yard at World Post. Um, I, I said that um, I've, I've asked, right. yeah, yeah. yeah I the, asked the other day, there's, they're asking for a stop. So it's a one-way street, street on Old Post Road, and people, they're going, the complaint is what I read, that they're going fast. And to me, I'm like, well, you know, it's just one way, just look one way. But if a lot, there's a, there's a, there's a walk path, a walkway. And no so the, yeah. Right. So the students going to school, they want to get across. They want to get across besides the foliage. It's hard to, you have to creep out, and when you look, cars don't really see you. So it's not unreal, it's not so, unrealistic to ask for the stop sign. Well, to build, you know, to do a crosswalk. So I think the, the genesis, uh, when we just talked about the looking at the visual obstructions, I think there was a similar request from, and looking over some old minutes from, uh, you know, 10 years ago. And at the time, what was diagnosed was that it was a visual obstruction issue. Um, and I think I'd even showed some of the historic uh, Google Street imagery. And it showed that what it was over the years and that when it was maintained and clean looking, 
there were no visual obstruction issues. Right, but the visual obstructions were if the cars are making a turn. I think the yeah. complaint is that they're going very fast down Old Post Road and those, whoever the kids are in the World Place Hall Street area, they have to go across. So when the cars are going fast in the morning, they have to run. I mean, I'm not there, but they have yeah. to walk quickly. And, so it's not the obstructions for the turn. Turn the onto Royal Place. Yes. Right, that's, that's a different and issue that's, that's than a crossing the street. And that's, that's where near accident asking. happened. So well, that's what I, I'm asking. For. So I can, uh, I again, see, you I know, a uh, point. We, we can certainly look at what the accident history is. Uh, my guess is if we uh, look at speed data or put a speed sensor out, I, I don't think it's going to show that vehicles are going tremendously fast. I mean, it's it's not a it's not a road that was designed to accommodate traffic going more than uh, I'm, I'm going to throw this out there. The, like I'm sorry, but the problem is that the visibility when someone's coming down uh, old, old Post Road and they're making the turn onto with the foliage there, they can't see anyone who's in the road on Royal Place. Right, unless they walk on the other side. Yeah. You can't make the, the kids walk on the other side. There's the foliage here. If you're walking on that side of the foliage, you, can, you can't see anything, no one can see you. If you're on the other side, the cars may be able to see you, but you can't say the kids walk on the other side. And those are specific yeah. things that, that the woman who complained said had happened and they were near accidents at that, for that reason. So what's the recommendation? Well, well, besides the foliage being cut, I think we should consider the recommendation of putting the, um, stop, the stop sign or at least a crosswalk to, to break up the stretch of old post road. It's a long stretch. That's what I think. I mean, okay, I, 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 you can, I you're familiar. I, that's, you can that's the, you can, that's your, Some, your authority to make a recommendation. I, I, that, something similar came up at Safer School the other day, and somebody said, it's not, it's even more dangerous to put a crosswalk if you don't have a stop sign across the road like that, is that correct? Um, I, I'm, I'm not a fan of crosswalks and controlled intersections. No stop sign, it's, it's not. Safe. Well, technically if you have a crosswalk and it's occupied, it is, does become. Yeah, that, well, I think that, that was the thing that uh, when we spoke, uh, when uh, Mr. Dempsey. Uh, like you think you have the right of way to go, but like right. nobody really? stops for you. The yeah. Crosswalk gives the pedestrian like a safety. It's supposed to stop. It's a law to stop, but like. Well, all the crosswalks. One of them by my house, and no one ever stops. There, there is a reason why I have a bright green jacket on when I walk. There's most, Sam's you know, a majority of the crosswalks do not have stop signs for two years. And they're all over. Get hit by a car. I bike a lot. Friends yeah, because it's more visual. Yeah, it's visual. It's also about occupying the crosswalk. It's it's about you know training drivers. Of course, you don't want to be the person on the, the bad train. Yeah, right. <laughs> I think we start with so like to your point, Michael. Like the foliage, you can even see it. On, like, it is literally in the road. Yeah. The foliage my point. there. My point is not the foliage is yeah. obvious. My point is going from is it from there to that Royal Place. From here, right from here to get over there to the to the walking path. So you're going across, and the cars are coming by 40 miles fast, an hour, yeah. and you do only have to walk one way. At first, I'm like, who cares? You just have to walk one way, but I do see the point, and I remember the email. I don't know, but I could sense it. It seemed pretty adamant. She's, whoever wrote it was very, so do, uh, I don't know if it was emotional, but intense about it, and they, they were making a good point. So I went over there. I'm like, okay, what are they talking about? Does there need to be a stop sign? Does there need to be a stop sign at that point? Um, yeah, I think so. I think it's a long stretch. And Dan, and why, what's see, the problem with putting a stop sign right there? Because if there's no accident, I mean, if there's no accident history, it, it doesn't meet any sort. From my perspective, doesn't meet any sort of warrant to, you know, necessitate a stop sign. I don't. I mean, if, if there's no. Remind me again when we no, remind me again when we put in. Stop well, the, the thing is when. Yeah, well, nice. when do we put in stop signs though? What, what necessitates us? Most traffic accidents are going to be at intersections that are controlled. It, it seems a little counterintuitive, but I can say right now, I, I, without having to look at, yeah. yeah, without having to look at any accident data, I can tell you that the most accidents we have are at signalized intersections. Um, and, and, you know, when you introduce traffic control devices where they're not warranted, you, you run the risk of, you know, Creating, it's creating, pro solving problems that don't exist. Well, don't you have multiple, like, but when you lump in 
uh, signal crossings, four-way stops, two-way stops, that's going to drive ac the, the accident data. But when you're just trying to have a car stop because there is an obstruction there and kids walking there, I don't think that's going to be a driver for, okay. for increasing accidents. I think it's a car stopping. It's not, it's not a car. It's not a bunch of cars stopping and then nobody knows whose turn it is or a light, right? Like a stop sign, one singular stop sign, I, I don't think if you disaggregate the data would suggest that one stop sign causes more accidents. But what's, what's the, again, from my perspective, what's the purpose of the stop sign if there's no quantifiable problem there to begin with? Well, I'm looking at this email from Bethany Babchik and she made a very good case and talks about the foliage, talks about, let me look at this, according to this, Royal Place is the only street requiring kids to cross in the middle of traffic. Stop sign cross would make this spot much safer. But that's an important line. It's the I, only place requiring kids to cross the middle of traffic. I, I mean, be an exaggeration. Maybe an exaggeration, but like I said, I, it's hard. I mean, any any that's intersecting, any T, any T intersection. Well, maybe it's an exaggeration, but yeah. she makes the point that I, mean, I, like I was there. And I, but, I think it's an issue with, with traffic. But, that, but that, again, we have T intersections yeah. all over the village. I, you know, I prefer well, a stop sign at a T intersection. Yeah. You put the water yeah. place in old closing. <laughs> Oh, it almost so makes you feel better that I'm going to stop. And like, and you're like, okay, I'm going to stop. Like, there's a reason to stop. I'm not being chicken. Lane as well. You know what I mean? Right. The well, we did on this is Benamore. Over here. Oh, it's her. Yeah. It's more. It's, more it's, a, it's a road coming, but it still makes well, me. Well, do we know if there's more people crossing? Because of, oh, of, of, not because of the way it's built, yeah. my approach to it is that of a stop sign. Yeah, it's a, it's a road. It's a road. It's a road. Right. I cross it every day. Right. It makes me makes me feel people, like I people need to be doing something time. when I'm there. Yeah. Of course, it was. Every place is a good idea for stop sign, yeah. but you know the you know screen. But that one in particular. Oh, oh what a great yeah, that's what? <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're speeding down. Go ahead. Go ahead. What are you doing? Walking. And uh, unless they can remove the foliage so that you can see someone's. I mean, the cars are only coming from this direction. Right, it's one way. Yeah, so Opus Road is one way. Royal Place is two way. Look to the left. It's a no-brainer to remove the foliage. And that's, that's, that foliage is is not accurate. I mean, that's is it worse now? Oh yeah. Oh. Well, this this is actually June of 2022, of 2016. Yeah. I was saying it is one way. It's not too hard to look to the left, but yeah. they still have to. Someone's going 40 or 50 miles an hour. It's a, it's an I, I I don't think anyone's going 40 or 50 no, miles no. an hour down Opus Road. Yeah. That, but I don't think they have to. If you're going 30 miles an hour, I think that's still too fast if you're making the turn. I go for it. I don't know. I just <clears throat> makes a case. It's hard, you know, for us. It's, it's hard for us traffic commission members to make a decision when we don't visit. And I'm just as guilty. It's like I've visited when I can. Right. I spent two hours, you know, yesterday. But I, but I, but I know that. What? Looking at that, all vehicles have a control point at Oriente and Rush. That is your first stop sign if they can go to a complete stop. Right. Then they're going from a zero acceleration, like Dan had said, right. forward. Yeah. Not, why not? And they're and, bearing to the right, going up right. around Gillies Park. Right. And, and I don't know how many of you and, and they're gonna pick up actually speed. come to you know, the... They're going to pick up speed by Gillies Park. But it's and also a sharp angle. It's not a straight... straight no, no, I saw it. They're, 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 they're turning right. it and they're going... You're right, so I'm jumping past the... those bushes? That's a that, that's, 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 that's what that, that's 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 yeah. cut. I mean, that's not the way. No, no, I know. This is this is July of 2016. I, that, so but why don't we have them trim it, and then we can collect more data from the people there. Like, just be like, what's like the, how many family, how many yeah. kids we're talking? About? What about a? I mean, I maybe I maybe somebody has said this already, but instead of a stop sign, what about a yield? I mean, would it slow them down with a yield? Is uh, it? I, 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 I think a yield is just as. I, I ignore it. Ignore it as a stop. And, and I'll see even with stop signs. Uh, how many of us come to a full and complete stop and oh, wait for two seconds? We talked about that on the Maranick Avenue. Maybe not two seconds. But, <laughs> but, no, but I, mean, I mean, that's the thing is. I'm a one I'm stop. I'm not going to lie. Okay, I do. No. Every once in a while, I do because I've gotten a few no, tickets in the mail. Like, like, is, you know, <laughs> through a red light. The most. <laughs> <laughs> 
Love getting those numbers. And that's part of it is, you know, a stop sign. People. Is, is, is this where they were asking for the sidewalk? Yeah. 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 Where the pole is. Yeah. What we did is. Um, I'd be curious to hear what. So what we could also look at um, the my recollection is that line is um, allows a five foot walking area. Because a five foot walking area is the minimum distance you need to allow for two way travel against a uh, a road. And so two, two way of people walking walking each way. Um, we could also look at maybe the next time we paint that line, pushing it out a little bit further, which would have the effect of narrowing the roadway making the driver less comfortable, you know, may, uh, probably have that, that desired effect of uh, reducing speeds. Brian is good for me. We should find out how many kids are actually walking that way to Central School. And the after email, we the cut email, the fully, email, email really made it seem like there's a lot. Yeah. Coming from Hall Place and Royal Place to walk that way. Mm -hmm. Excuse me? It would really be who is coming from, from Hall. Hall Street and Royal Place to come out that way. That's right. Because everybody else from yeah, Orienta is coming. Off yeah, they're making a left Orienta into that. Into right. I, I mean, I discovered old post road. I never I saw it before. I'm like, wow, what a nice yeah, road. The, 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 there are a lot of kids on Hall Street because I have a friend there. A lot of kids on Hall Street, so I'm sure they. That's how they go. Take Royal yeah, Place. The, I'm, I'm sure the school may have demographic data. I'm not sure how eager they are to publicize that right. or if it's if it is uh, public information um uh, i can sort of think there, there's well i know there's census information that will probably break down uh ages of uh the, the residents out there the school website will give you the demographics they like like down to not where they live not where they live yes yeah. yeah. no there's um this uh the the 2020 census data Maybe may have that type of granular information. I, I don't look at it enough to have an answer to that question off the top. Yeah, of let's head. start with the foliage is an obvious problem. Yeah. Like so there's no the debate over it. So, and then follow up with it. We can talk to the residents, be like, has this made a difference? You know, the answer may be no, but it's it, let's at least start with what we know is broken. Yeah. You know, so I was I was told that the former owner of that house refused to right. do it, but there's a new owner and that person is open to. To do it. Yeah, and, if they're asked, but even so, if, if it's in our opinion, it's a a violation, and we give them an order remedy. If they don't take care of it, we have we have uh, we have both the carrot and the stick. So how do we get them to do it? Just send them a letter or something? Well, and, and that's what you do. Is I, I asked my asked the building department and code enforcement to look at it. Uh, they were going to take care of it uh, this week. Right. Um, what if if they determine there's an issue, they issue. Uh, which knows an order to remedy to the property owner. The property owner has a fixed time within which to uh, address it. If they don't address it, then we can issue a violation, bring it to court. Could you tell DPW that the commission says there's an issue as opposed to DPW determining whether there's an issue or not? Well, no, I mean, there, there, there are, there, there's, a, there's a code that we have to abide by. There's a New York State property maintenance code. So that's I that's don't our. Care about our recommendation. So well, they, 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 they care about your recommendation, but they care more if it's, what, it's what the loss, what the code says. What's the address? Uh, I, I told him just look at the intersection. Okay. So he'll look so at all, all corners of the intersection. Voyage. And you're and we're gonna uh, we're gonna check additional data with um, school. Yeah, just like really I mean, just looking looking at it now, and if you're saying there are that many kids. <laughs> I feel like you should put a stop sign at a crosswalk across because that's where you want the kids to walk. Like that is what we created instead of a sidewalk. You know? Yeah. I would agree with that. I mean, if there are enough, you know, that's like walking from so consider Gertrude Avenue sign. to the Homics. Consider a stop sign across. Okay. That was my path to walk to school. By the time you hit 
What's the Boston what's Post Road and crossed over? What's what's the next one? And why was this denied twice? So maybe, maybe in Robert's well, practice, we have that somewhere that there was a request for a stop well, sign. Dan, did you deny, did you previously deny this request for stop sign? Well, that's what the letter is saying. I answered. Oh, yeah. we, we deny, we deny the stop sign and instead oh. said, remove, clear the foliage. Oh, that's the answer. Yeah. And when, uh, when grows when was back. that line painted for the water? Well, okay. It grows back. I don't think this woman ever. Like it it's been a while. Yeah. She it's was never wild. notified. That's so, the problem. She was never notified that the stop sign was, according to her email, oh, I, no, I, I, rejected. I, I don't think I've been sitting okay. with the traffic. I oh, really have been sitting with the traffic commission since the beginning of this year. Sorry. All right. I, right. I, said, well, I think I've always been saying Actually, I think it was a different I mean, person who wrote this year. I know it came up. I think. In looking at old minutes, it was when uh, uh, a, uh, a different uh, person from the fire department was liaison. Yeah, I mean, yeah. it was when Rod. It was Rod back then, yes. Yeah. It was Rod, then it was temporary. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. It was definitely Rod was the Rod liaison. Was the I think so. Yeah, Rod was with you guys for quite a few years. Yeah. How so is that? Are we, uh, where are we? <laughs> yeah, let's, are we? let's move on to, because Robert has new items of business to you want me to go over the items that I have that I think we need to cover? Yeah, yeah. And we can decide whether we'll do them tonight or so. Mm -hmm. my, my list is the McDonald's drive drive through. I don't know if you've been to McDonald's. McDonald's, the new McDonald's is great. The problem is it's so popular with that people, cars going to the drive through back out into Boston Post Road in both directions. So the two lane road on Boston Post Road become one lane roads both directions because you have the cars going south looking to turn in plus the car is going north and it stops traffic. Kino, well, Kino knows can right. I, 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 I can address that. I, I stayed for school the other day yeah. and so the, really the there's a, yeah. a, a decades long tail on this one. Um, the the drive through that they have was installed before it was addressed in our zoning code. So it's a pre-existing non-conforming condition. They have, and for several years, they had asked the village to consider a zone change uh, to allow for the drive-through because they wanted to uh, upgrade the building and redesign the site to allow for better traffic circulation. That was never approved. Uh, the property, they, what they did was they just renovated the property so because when you cease to operate your non-conforming condition for six months, you lose it. So they had they could only shut down the site for less than six months. And because of that, uh, there was no changes to the, uh, the site plan or the site circulation. But the problem is not just the traffic congestion that it creates. It's the kids walking across the drive through I mean, that's school way, whatever you want to call it. I haven't, you know, that's concert a root of things. Well, but, it, it, but, it, but it's the this, problem it's, then. It's the yep. same thing on the other side of the road because it's just as dangerous as cars coming in and, and out of Trader Joe's. Wasn't it like it was like that before too? Yeah. What yeah. It, 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 like it's it worse like now. Yeah. Right. yeah. What if we had a joint letter to you know the, the franchise owner, the McDonald's from Safe Routes to School? We get as many signatures from you know powers that be. You have all the people that come to Safe Routes. It could be rubber stamped and signed as well by the traffic commission reaching out with a concern to the franchise owner perhaps she or he is just not aware like the the franchise doesn't want people backed up like right well, no, 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 sorry maybe mcdonald's can put up signs for the cars going through the drive through well, or the, entering about beware of kids one thing that students. i brought up and i don't remember what your answer was yet that a, a lot of the times when it's really busy mcdonald's has an employee out there right Taking orders on a handheld thing, yeah, but they're not moving the cars along, and nobody knows how to drive nowadays. So nobody pulls up far enough. Like if they need somebody controlling traffic, but I don't know if we're allowed to. No, and, and that's part of it. Is, is can we oh, raise a concern? Can like can is I, school like? So I can I ask that question? I'm just going to revert it back to a situation for with my husband's business as far as lines. And he's near the 50th precinct. And 
when the car wash is busy, there are lines in the street because we're in the Bronx. Well, what happened is that the police department, 50th Precinct approached him and said, how can we figure out a way to, we can't tell your cars not to be here, but how can we facilitate them being in a, moving in a safe manner and being policed by your business? where we had to have employees out there moving them along and making sure that they weren't stopping other people's driveways or the way a car would be pulling out. How about our code enforcers going to have that conversation with McDonald's or our police department having that conversation with McDonald's to better facilitate safety rather than writing these letters? I think that's better and then if that doesn't work, then maybe. Right. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I you can always ask. I, I can, as far as physical changes to the site, they just invested a bunch of money. They're not going to make any and make any more investments. To now, now the, uh, the the cars um, make going um, west make the left mm -hmm. right. Yeah. Is that legal? Is that a legal left? Yeah. I mean, I mean, uh, I don't, I don't think that they're, they're, I don't think it's a left turn lane there. I think they're. No, I think but there's not a turn. Well, I mean, what, what you're, what you're going to wind up, what will probably wind up happening, is cars that can't make the left turn there, we are going to go into one of those shopping centers along the that's, way, that's turn around and come back. Yeah, but, that's, but that's, that's what the cars are doing. Then, or yeah, so, so so it's like the trader, like, like, like yeah. when uh, it's, it's, Trader Joe's. Yeah, but it, it, yeah. Again, we can look at it, but it, it's just gonna, it, it's but, gonna move the problem to the town, which. Yeah, but I think hmm. that having that problem is better than having the problem. That exists. Yeah, I mean, uh, making making a right off of the uh, from the westbound lane. Yeah. Is one thing making it making a left across uh, those those traffic to uh, the, that that other traffic lane is is a whole different thing. And and trying to make the left when there's kids crossing and people are impatient because they're having right. to wait so long to turn left and you get stuck place. in the middle of the street. Right. It's, 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 and cars are sitting right there in that like and the, there's make, and you there's know. kids there all day long because the high school has open campus. And there are lunch times at eleven. What about, so what about talking to the high school and saying stop having open campus? No, well, that's not. So we're not in that. that. No, but I mean, it's <laughs> if, if that's no. a driving factor. No, but it, I mean, it's not a drive. But I was just saying, like, it's it's constant foot traffic and constant traffic of cars yeah. turning left and turning into McDonald's. Well, take a listen. Go on to something else, because I don't think we're going to come to any people. decisions tonight. <laughs> I don't know, can I go it's through my list? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's it's a valid concern. Like one quick, when they open the Just Salad, remember from a year ago when they first approached us, that Just Salad's going to be opening right down the block. Too. Chopped, chopped. Sorry, yeah. <clears throat> so they haven't finished the building yet. They're still under construction. So we yeah. haven't seen the the results of how that's going to work with the kids crossing the street. That that hasn't happened yet. But at least in front of the high school, there's a crossing guard whenever it's lunchtime, too. Like, there's always a crossing guard there at lunchtime in the morning and after school. So well, as long as that traffic on Boston Post Road is slow, and I think the 25 mile an hour speed limit, if we can get it on there, would be helpful. I think as long as that traffic is slow enough, that solves your problem. Once you, once you start uh, getting a... Uh, well, you, you already have the speed. It's a speed zone already. Yeah. So I, I think the speed limit is either 20 or 25 right now anyway, yeah, right. during school hours. School 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 in this case, I don't think the speed is the problem. I think it's the congestion. And I'm there, like, people who are not familiar with the neighborhood, someone's stopping in the left lane to make a left, and they're waiting. And then I hear honking and honking, and people get impatient. So you get honk from behind, so you naturally go yeah, I mean, not supposed to. So I, don't, I think it's above our The pay. fact it's is that there's this is problem, man. I don't need yeah. I think that's all. Unless you, can I, unless you say no, like yeah, look at how to reroute the traffic. They they the next Especially so if there's a at our September meeting, Mr. Desai was here and so told us about in this room, excuse sure. me, at our at our September meeting, Mr. Desai was here and talked about the comp plan and asked us to read and Brian sent around this transportation section. Um, and we were supposed to meet with him to give our recommendations within the comp plan regarding traffic and transportation. Is, is that no longer happening? I don't know why he's not here. Suggestions that come are, you, are you are you ready to uh, have the conversation? 
I am. Anybody else? I can look at notes, it? but it was pretty detailed. I don't know. If yeah, I'm you know, always not here yeah. now. I have so a lot of questions. Mentioned. I have a lot of questions. You have um, to invite him to come to your meeting because he was at our. He said he was going to come here. He said or he oh, came, came to the last meeting, and he said, but are, if, if if you're ready to speak with him, I'll, I'll ask him to come back." Yeah, it's asking for next yeah, one. Yeah, let's have him come the next one. I looked okay. at it. There's a lot of information. It took me a long time to read five pages. And that was like when I was going I, I to be honest, honest, I'm, I'm not ready stand. for it. I just have some questions about the bike. So the ride. next meeting. Okay. Yeah, yeah, right. more thorough. So the next is, are the spreadsheets? Where, where are we on the spreadsheet issue? Is there anything the village can do to help? But uh, Brian, the software Brian, day. you're familiar with. Uh, yeah, sure. Dan. You want to comment? You know, talk about that. What we can do? What? Yeah, we need to be able to have things on share on a SharePoint. That's that's. Yeah, so is that something Dan, you have to work Dan, out? Dan, let me. Let me. I, I I neglected to follow up with our IT. Yeah, is this because we? I think it's. We have we're, we're limited on um, yeah, your idea. outlook. So we need to be able to have like access to SharePoint or Excel or something. Yeah, it, it's it's all it, it's dependent on what the license that we have provides. Yeah, it's just a win, win, Windows three sixty five, right? Yeah, that we should. Yeah, yeah, I think you know the only yeah. people who have the super license are the uh, yeah, staff like, and board. Brian needs to disclose. He's like, you know, I'm no, <laughs> by no no like means endorsing five license, the top license. <laughs> Take it to the cleaner. You, you know, I can do. Let, let me uh, I'll, I'll, I'll talk to my IT person. Uh, maybe I can see if he can reach out to you to answer some of the more I technical questions. Right. Yeah, I reached out to him even before, and he didn't get back to me. But yeah, okay. maybe a nudge from you would help. Okay. Yeah, well, do you want to have a with uh, Ryan? I'll do it. I, I know all the licensing SKUs. We okay. Sell it okay. Day. Yeah, the way they're we're collecting the information in, in, a, in this document, it would be profitable for everybody to share it because okay. here is here lies any you have a roadmap and you, you have a roadmap that's that's valuable. Yeah. So can I comment on that? On can I comment on this? Yeah. So you all have a copy. Um, what I did is my best effort in trying to get it to get it right. I'm sure yeah. I didn't get it all. Um, so. If you have time, go through it. If you find things that need to be changed or added or, or doesn't jive with, you know, write it down, give it back to me, and I'll try to update it on the original so we're in a better place with it. You know, I would have to rely on everybody to yeah. participate. That's yeah. why the idea of sharing it is a good idea because we all have a chance to add comments, to add, add to it. Yeah, you seen um, this? So, Rockland Avenue. So we received emails from two people Everything is recently who are really pissed off at us. Sorry, that we haven't done anything on Rockland. You, we all know that's a terrible place. So the crosswalks that we approved for at the intersections that you asked for specifically yeah, haven't been done yet. Up. Yeah, out. yeah. I, I I asked uh, Tina to follow with me directly on that. Okay. Laura, this is for you. Yeah, well, I, think you, I said I, I wanted you to maintain your your domestic tranquility. You want to talk about that? Uh, well, I, you asked if you should have your husband right, follow up. Circled back to the traffic commission, and I don't know what that avenue is for it to come back here for that one spot to be removed on Oway Plains Road and cornering Madison. It was sent back for us to review, which I feel we already have. And I don't know what I don't know what the next step is to remove it, move it, and push it back to I the. Just, just make make your formal recommendation back to the board. I think the. Um, so the, I'm sorry. The question was whether to have a standalone or to have a delivery. I think that was part of the question. I right? think that um, a Trustee or Nashes happen. was questioning that, and we had had that conversation before it got circled back here that 15 minute parking cannot be policed or enforced because you would have to have your traffic your 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 traffic and and meter people going out every 15 minutes which is not happening at the moment with the 2 hour parking 15 minutes is probably a lot to burden somebody to have to do for an area um, and they had just in, in implemented the no standing so the suggestion would be the no parking on that corridor itself is the issue from corner to corner. And you're gonna see in another email, uh, a resident requesting another parking spot to be removed on New Street and Old White Plains Road because that's, it's the same issue. 
So again, I would I would move and and to put this back onto the work session to put a no parking from that corner as previously requested. I make a motion to place a no parking on Oway Plains Road on the corner of Madison, no parking. Is that for the one, one space or two space? One space. Okay. I second the motion. Nick, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Is White Plains Road in Madison? Right, it's the existing, it's the existing recommendation that was agreed upon and then got circled back. Was, uh, that was uh, Dan's uh, concern about the uh, loading. Right. Yeah. Okay. Right. right. Which that is why we were removing. No, to, to just reiterate, we were removing the parking because we have continuous parking yeah. there. And if there's loading, they're double parking and they're loading off into the middle of the street. What's the difference? And, and you covered it, but like I thought we already made the motion last meeting. We did. And oh. it got circled back and sent back to us for recommendation and, I, and it got it got over complicated at the board and, and uh, just kicked it. it back so so you can you can clarify your your wishes and send it back cool okay can i continue yeah can I? um clear yeah so there are two things that we approved that so remember the hawthorne garage or that uh, co-op they needed uh, visibility yeah. issues so we approved that but it hasn't happened yet. Maybe you could follow up on that. Yeah, right. I put the work orders in. I think okay, but in, Dork hasn't been done. Yeah, okay. I'll, I'll check. I mean, I was I put those work orders in. I like, remember the May. Drury Drive, the guy who uh mm -hmm. so they put the wrong sign up. Did he contact you? I told him to I, well he you. we I, he I put the wrong we made the up. correction, but I think he's he had an issue with the like the direction of the sign now or like how it's placed. Yeah. Um he sent an email to us. I haven't seen it yet, so I'll, I'll follow up when I see it. Because we were pretty exact in the, those measurements. Yeah. I mean, you went over those measurements. Yeah. Um, with, with, with you guys, yeah. And we got an email about the Harbor Island, the boat parking. Is that something we shouldn't address? Well, I mean, it's you, you it's really, a, you know, it's well, not yeah, I, I, I mean, parking permits, and that's really an administrative item. Um, you know, what the request was is, uh, you know, to allow people to park in that instead of ending it. Uh, November or, or November one, maybe like October one. So residents can park there. I went down there the other day. I mean, it was even at 10 o'clock more, it was two thirds full. So, I mean, there are people using, there are boaters using those spaces. Yeah. 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 They said during, during, the, during the week. Sure. It, was yeah. on a it was on a Tuesday. I mean, right. as, when I saw that email, as soon as I got into the office on uh, Tuesday, was it Tuesday or no, Wednesday, uh, I actually, Went right down there first thing before getting into my office to look at it. Uh, I had I had to go to a doctor's appointment in the morning, so I went there first. It was two thirds full, and that was about ten, actually maybe close to eleven thirty. Yeah, and, and I've heard from people who parked in there. They had the permit. They parked in there, and they got a they got a you know a side side because of yeah. it. And it's parking in other It's a convenience yeah, issue. Let them run the park. I mean, yeah, that, I mean that's it, that's. It was more. It's more of a convenience issue as opposed to a. A, a traffic safety issue. Yeah. yeah. Well, convenient, but it's a senior citizen. Like, no. not to get into the weeds of it. Maybe it's something like seniors and. I think I'm the only senior citizen. Here. There's a lot of antitrust. Yeah. But and I think they can park in the. Yeah. Okay. yeah, and they can. I think they can park in those boat trailers. Um. So everybody knows. I'm sorry. Everybody knows that the September meeting, the uh, you know, yeah. uh, somehow the the video got deleted. I can so go did back. That, from... Did that help you? Did that make it impossible for you to see the minutes? <laughs> it made it, yeah. Like, like, but recollect. I'm gonna try and go just back to the, the basics. Yeah, you, know, you don't need to go into detail. Yeah. And go back. And I, know, and I sent out a lot of follow ups after that. And we have a lot of stuff through email. <laughs> well, how about if we all? How about how about if we all take a check my phone? That. No, I'll, I'll take first step and let people add to it. I don't want to. Well, that's me. what I'm saying. If we all add to it, like I can remember some of the um, comprehensive plan conversation. I right. could kind of yeah. dump that in for you. Thank you. You know. It was funny because I remember when Could Lena said that, I was like, I yeah. remember for a fact you're in that small little room. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you're 
It's amazing. Start, 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 start the camera and reenact the beating. It's amazing. Well, it's just like that. Because we went through a lot. Well, the other thing is that. They are history. That's all that's required. It can be, they can be as good as I, I know, but, but when you when you relied on the fact that you thought it was being videoed and you were just in the moment and, and listening, you're like, oh, wait, what happened in September? I have three more things. One, one is Claflin. We never got the report from the fire department. Remember, there was the parking issue. Whether yeah, I think they yeah. made the site visit, but I don't know that they changed the parking. Actually, so he needs to speak to Dan to let him know whether they can allow parking or whether he's going to measure the width of the street. Yeah, yeah. But can I talk about two other things first? Yeah. Um, do, do you want uh, Andy? Uh, Mr. Walker, reply from the fire department. I have it from the fire chief. Sure. Okay. Position of the fire department is they have reviewed. Claflin Avenue in the 300 block that requests for parking. As per the fire chief verbatim, the item should be forwarded to the building department to make them involved in the issue and check the proper, check the roadway is proper and the enforced fire, enforce the fire code. Roadway proper and enforce the fire code is the fire chief's reply to it. So the fire department would like to see it uh, forwarded to the building department. They have reviewed everything I gave them and all the conversation about the installing the parking where they want it. And they said the matter is a building department matter. So if I'll open that. Well, does the building department dictate? Can it's code enforcement side. Of yeah, there's a code enforcement issue. Um, and you know, luckily one of our- Someone uh, move the sign. We'll, we'll follow up with, luckily, you know, one of our, one of our, uh, our fire inspector is also a, a paid firefighter in the city of White Plains. So, he understands fire department speak very well. Oh, I heard, yeah, I heard anecdotally that the signs were moved yeah. by an unhappy resident. Yeah. So we're, we're, we're following up. Yeah, like not kidding. Thank yeah. You. The last item of the uh, April minutes, well, we had to do the minutes. We didn't have the April minutes. So I did the April minutes. Thank they you. were part of the agenda. So we need to approve them. Did everybody read the April minutes? Yes. I didn't, but. There's consensus. Okay, so there's kind of a controversial issue in the April minutes that I want to have a kind of brief discussion, and it had to do with um, this issue of you know we have a member who hasn't been attending our meeting for over a year, yeah, and trying to get him removed and replaced. And the reason we want to get him removed and replaced is because we had two meetings that had to be canceled because we didn't have a quorum. So the idea of having an, an additional person reduces the likelihood that we have to cancel meetings for lack of a quorum. That is the only issue. You were going to follow up with Jerry about what did you learn or find out about that, if you know. Jerry, Lou, if you remember, this is actually from a couple of months back. Mm -hmm. We reached out to Jerry. Yeah. And he mentioned that. I think that's I think that I think you gotta you gotta wait till December of it. Why is that? New board sits. That's, right. just, that's, Jer that's Jerry's preference. Something specifically. You're supposed to email Jerry and Sally, and then they are supposed to reach out to that person. And There's a code. It's in the code. I think he did. Was, well, I think we've yeah. done this now for, for several months. So this goes back. But this is the problem. No, but Brian, as the chair, has to send an email yeah. requesting and telling them about this person. So in March, in March, Brian became chair, and I, with his permission, he said I could, on his behalf, send this. So I sent the email to the village manager. I have a copy of the letter here. Explain this person has been here. Could he comply with the village code? Contact this person, find out if he wants to continue. If he doesn't want to continue, the next step is he's removed by an order of the village manager. The village manager notifies the board. The board then finds a replacement and a replacement. So this, this goes back to March. And the reason that I am frustrated by it is I don't understand. So I understand Lou saying that now we're in, in, we're in October, you know, December is just two months away. And I, I understand that. But my frustration is that why from March to now get all this diddle daddle and, and not get done? That is, that is the source of my frustration. And I'm going to repeat again. The, the reason I thought this was so important is because we had to cancel meetings because we didn't have a quorum. 
to get another person to reduce the likelihood of, I'm gonna just repeat it, reduce the likelihood of having cancellations, that, that is the sole reason that we needed another person. I'm disappointed that during that period of time, that wasn't done. And I'm just expressing my disappointment. That's all. Um, and and just for the for the my I, for my own recollection, have we can't have we canceled meetings? I, I, we had a can we cancel we meeting in November. Meeting. Not since we've been. Not since. And we canceled a meeting in March. Yes, this one in March, March when yeah, I first canceled. Yes. Um, so we, we had a canceled people. meeting. We had to have a second meeting. That's when we met with Shannon. And our first meeting had to be canceled. We were going to have a training session with her. We had to cancel because we didn't have a quorum. And there was a. Thank you. Uh, there was another before you guys came on in December, in November of 2021, we had to cancel a meeting because there was no problem. It's sort of like a building year for us, I think. Well, I so remember Jerry back in the spring. Spring. Fix that, right? He did, and yeah. he said he took care of it. Yeah. That's that's the frustration part that he said he took care of it, and obviously something fell through the cracks. It didn't happen. I, I also want to go over something because Lou, you are our, our liaison. Mm -hmm. You requested two things from the Board of Trustees. One, that, so right now, the only reason to remove a person on a volunteer committee is if they don't attend meetings. You requested that there be additional reasons to remove someone. Well, it, it, just, it just seemed, when, I, when, this, when, you, when the item you mentioned came up, I, look, I looked it up in the code and I said, this is very, very narrow and very specific and very, uh, very, um, I, th I thought poorly written. So I thought I thought there should be how how do you remove people from well, what for what reasons would you remove somebody from from the board, and um, and how would you do that? And the idea that you must talk to them seemed like why? I mean, if he doesn't show up, he's gone. I mean, I, I, I that should be that should be Jerry's uh, Jerry should be able just to, to say he didn't show up three times. The, 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 you know, I, I think. The chairman tells the, tells the village manager this guy hasn't been showing up. The village manager says he's off, he's off the commission. And no you're call, done. no show. It's not it's not a Supreme Court appointment. That was my that was my point. So there was all this all this uh, this this rigmarole, and and I think Jerry got frustrated with it and uh, just just uh, just said that's disappointing. Hmm? I say that's disappointing. Yeah, it is disappointing. Okay. It's I'd disappointing. Like to, it's, it's, like to sorry, I'd like. I don't, you know, I don't want to. But, but you know what? It's 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 not it's not a call. It's Jerry's call. Jerry can Jerry does it, and 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 we function. I, I don't think we should we, we should we should be. Uh, I understand about. that, but I want to read for the minutes if you don't mind, because this is my last opportunity. Um, at our March 2022 meeting, Lou told us that if a member misses three consecutive meetings, that he or she is automatically removed from the commission. That was my understanding. Right. Robert then asked Lou why the person who has not attended our meeting since July 2021 is still listed as a member of the commission. Robert also asked Lou to explain if that person was removed from the commission. As you said, a person doesn't attend. Well, I would think it would, it would, right? it would. So let me let me finish what I wrote. Um, Robert asked Lou to explain if that person was removed that, that was, from the commission. That's right. As Lou said he was, why the board of trustees hasn't appointed a replacement. So if you were saying that the person is automatically removed, my question was, why hasn't somebody been replaced? Because the board and of you trustees. Respond, and you responded, <laughs> excellent question. I will inquire. The board of trustees. And then I said, always function. And then Robert <laughs> then asked Lou when he would get back to us regarding the status of a replacement. Lou responded that he will check tomorrow and ask. Okay. I didn't hear any response from you. Okay. All right. Well, it's happened. it's okay. I would just say. Don't worry about it, and we'll and, and we'll uh, and we'll we'll we'll, uh, we'll we'll let it resolve itself in uh, in December when we uh, we work some things. But is that person's term up? Because then they could be. Re I, I believe it is. A, I believe it is. A, I don't have it. You know what? Yes, I'm, 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 that term in is December. Up. Right. Yeah, that would be the third year. You know. I mean, I tried to no, get. But you're allowed to do two. I don't think he's gonna. I know. I hope the person that hasn't showed up is gonna be reappointed. That seems he's a little like, he's, absurd, he's, but he's anything's not, and, possible. And, and you know, and it was a whole thing with with. I was trying to get the 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 the, the uh, other members of the board to ad address the issues that I thought I saw in the code. They didn't want to do it. And then somebody else had it. Did another issue, and then, uh, and then and so nothing happened, which is frequently what happens with the board. Nothing happens, and then uh, and then Jerry does whatever he wants to do because they didn't do anything. 
Brian? Yeah, well, how about simply sending yeah, a follow-up email? Yeah, I have the thread. Lou asked Jerry to yeah. put out a call for volunteers. Yes. For yeah, people yeah. for the open position. Because it's also yeah. not listed on the website as an open position. No. Oh. I'll, follow, I'll follow up yes. with, in the email. That, that, that way it keeps it fresh. what he said he was going to do. Yeah. As did I asked Jerry. I was like, he hasn't yeah, come. My recollection is there were concerns. There were Some of these issues were discussed with the board. I think the board didn't want to make any changes to the law as it's the board, yeah the board would the board didn't want to do anything they, they, they were like they were just they just talked about it and we should do this we should be doing that but the, the problem with the board is is that it takes three votes to do it it's a you know do it, ruling by committee is very inefficient and they, and they don't come to consensus and then things don't get done and then then the you the manager does whatever he wants. Right. Yeah. Or and and I would send it to the attention of Augie and yeah, yeah. and Jerry's secretary Courtney. And well, Sally always send a follow. Yeah. Fun. No, it's not that they didn't they, they did answer, they just there was no but it gets so busy and yeah. they you know yeah. the town is the village is moving. I think you could get a hundred emails a day. Right here. I mean, the, the, you know, there, there's no. going to be some reorganization. Right. So we'll it, it wouldn't it hurt to basis. throw that that yeah. question back into the queue again. So maybe somebody who is interested. The, and, and this commission has been very has been very functional. Right. Right. It's, been, it's been doing a lot of stuff. profitable. Oh, do, do I need to make a motion to oh, sorry, approve the minutes? One last thing. Sorry, to interrupt. So the other thing you asked for, Lou, is you wanted the change the consistency of the traffic commission is assigned seven people mm -hmm. you said we only need six no no what i said was it should say no more than seven and not seven because right that now your, you're operating that was, your, that was your reason for not having appointed another person it was a, I, Can you well, explain why you think we only need six and not no, seven I mean, like, as this, required this is, by the code this is not something you need, you need to worry about so um I, it, it said there, the, the, the commission has seven members of it. If there weren't, if there weren't seven members, then then it, you know it would imply that maybe this isn't a valid commission. I would say it should say no more than seven. Just a, a, a legal. You uh, said no uh, more than six. No, whatever. It's not. Uh, it's not something we need to worry about. I have a question not related to anything. So, Jerry, you mentioned that you guys we had a proved changing. The no parking time on the signs behind the Marion High School, mm -hmm. and it was done. The signs were changed, but so I've come to learn that when it's something that doesn't have to go to the board, that's not a resolution, which is what this was. The police chief doesn't get notified. She only gets notified when there's things that go to the board. So nobody knew. The parking enforcement didn't know that the so time this went to the board. But this went to the board. Yeah, yeah. Went to the board. We it absolutely, did. We absolutely passed. I it. watched. I watched the. I watched the video. We voted on it. And and the mayor actually. Okay. So parking enforcement did not know. Okay. But now they know. Okay. So yeah. I didn't know if there was a protocol. We had a whole discussion about it. Okay. Yeah. No, but yeah. No, yeah anything that the parking enforcement didn't know. Yeah. Anything that we can enforce yeah. is in the code. Okay. okay. Anything we enforce should be in the code. So my question is this, who makes the chief aware that this, this situation is occurring? How does that happen? Well, How, what's that flow? So, I mean, there's, there's two avenues. First, there's police representation here. Second, when, uh, you know, uh, we, all the survey resolutions are sent to all the department heads and the chiefs of department, so she gets it at that point as well. So this committee isn't missing um, a marker as to what we should be doing. No. Not everything goes to the board, though, right? Because like if you're no, so, if, if, if there's if there's sign if there's signage that is not establishing or changing an, a, a current restriction, that's not going to go to the board. I mean, if, like I said, if, if if the recommendation is to you know uh, uh, put up uh, a warning sign or say you know uh, like a, like a reduce a reduced speed warning for a curb. Mm -hmm. That's not enforceable. That we can do that ourselves. Okay. That does not that require board approval. Yeah, it's, it's not something they. The, I, 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 I don't want to sound dismissive, but the police department doesn't need to. They're they're generally not going to be 
they, they don't need to know every last thing about something that they don't have to enforce. Okay. Before we approve the April minutes, I just have a question about how many people are on the parking enforcement patrol, people who check for the meters and whatnot. Do we have a staff? Um, well, it, well, we have. Help out? So we well, we have parking enforcement officers. That's yes. And they they can be supplemented by uh, police officers. So I'm saying not supplemented for a parking enforcement. Officer. I'm going to think it go out. But they do. Yeah. There is for. Check well, out the parking again, but, as opposed to just you know. Oh, no, they, and they do, but you know, it's. You know, we, we don't have everyone assigned to meters. No, I understand. Yeah. Yeah. I was wondering how many. Yeah. Of course. It's, 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 it's lack of staff. <laughs> well, that, yeah, we had talked about that, about the comprehensive plan. We had that conversation a few separate times about who can enforce, you know, traffic. Can you hire somebody like Laz to come in and take care of that? No, but that's something I think that's a big, huge conversation and incorporate that something that could be incorporated into the comprehensive plan as far as parking and changing parking. We can talk about that next month, right? Yeah. Seems like it would pay for itself. I think we're, I think we're good. We can put up the April minutes. I admittedly did not read them, but if the rest of the board saw them then did anybody read them i did i did did no, anybody I notice the typo i when i talked about the mount pleasant i referred to it as mount jefferson nobody noticed <laughs> that i guess i might have changed but the mount you took us there no i did i did i am I'm glad a horrible that you noted speller, so that i kind of understood it andre Gar uh garcia was absent you did notate that, that he's is, always been absent that's accurate <laughs> that's um yeah, I think I think everything looks good. Uh, is it, is it make a Except motion? that typo. Except that typo, which I'll so Penny fix the, for the uh, the correct street. I'm always confusing Mount Pleasant. Make a motion to I do that all the time, and I've lived here 55 years, and I, I do that all the time. Stuck in my head. <laughs> Second, John. I trust Robert. Um, so uh, who who, who, uh, who motioned? Uh, I did. Okay, um, I'll make a motion to end the meeting. Second. All in favor? Aye. Thank you, officer. Thank you, uh, Andy. Thank you.